Hey there, what's up? Tim Warner here, and I'm inspired to teach you about the Serial Console functionality that's available in Microsoft Azure for both your Windows as well as your Linux virtual machines. Now, if you're an old person like me, you understand what the Serial Console is all about. It's traditionally a method where you would use an RS-232 serial cable to connect and configure a router switch or perhaps a server that doesn't have a monitor, keyboard, and or mouse attached to it. It's a way to also troubleshoot a system that's inaccessible on the network because, again, you're coming in through a serial cable connection. In Azure, this translates to a virtual machine that is in a similarly inaccessible state, at least from a network perspective. So therefore, Serial Console presents an awesome way for us to come in through a proverbial back door as an administrator protected by RBAC, where we can do things, for instance, like starting or stopping services, changing rules in the Windows firewall, editing configuration files, this kind of stuff. Of course, we're not going to do any TCP IP configuration within the Serial Console. We're going to do that from within the Azure control plane. But anyway, enough yapping my gums. Let's get to the configuration. Here, as you can see, we're looking at a virtual machine called MyVM2. It runs Windows Server 2016. And note specifically that it has no public IP address, so we're not connected directly to the Internet anyway. How can we obtain this Serial Console connection? Well, I'm going to come into Settings and type Serial. And you'll notice that in addition to the Serial Console option, we have Boot Diagnostics. Why is this here? Well, Boot Diagnostics is the prerequisite for Serial Console. So for both Linux and Windows Server VMs, you'll need to make sure in your ARM template or in the portal or in CLI or PowerShell or whatever it is that you do, that you enable Boot Diagnostics and you point Boot Diagnostics to a storage account. Why is that necessary? Well, Boot Diagnostics has, besides the ability to unlock the Serial Console, the other main thing that Boot Diagnostics does is it takes periodic screen captures of the console state of your virtual machine. Let me show you what I mean. I'll switch over to Azure Storage Explorer. And as you can see here, I've authenticated into my subscription and drilled into my diagnostic storage account into the blob containers or the blob service. And when you enable boot diagnostics, you get a container labeled boot diagnostics dash VM name dash good. And as you can see, my MyVM2 Azure's already created a screenshot BMP that I can sanity check by right clicking and downloading it. Of course, you can also see this in the portal, but I figured I'd show you another method just for illustrative purposes. Let me minimize my Storage Explorer and Portal and open up that bitmap in my default image editor. There it is. So this is what you'd expect. If it were a Linux virtual machine, you'd see a text screen. But again, the idea is that you just want a quick sanity check that your system's not in a hung, or at least in a Windows context, a blue screen crash state. Let's step out of the Boot Diagnostics configuration blade and head over to Serial Console and see what kind of trouble we can get into. Let's collapse our settings to give ourselves more screen real estate. Remember, the reason why we would consider coming into Serial Console is if we're having trouble connecting to our virtual machine, that there's something messed up possibly with its networking stack or network configuration, and we need to come in, or possibly the virtual machine just will not boot. And so it's generally an emergency access. I sometimes, though, will use Serial Console as a convenience. If I need to use, say, install Windows feature, or remove Windows feature to do some basic configuration on the server, and I don't want the overhead of establishing a remote desktop protocol connection in, or even SSH for that matter, Serial Console represents a way to do that. Okay, so here it is. We're at the SAC prompt, and it tells us in the event category that the CMD command is now available. To start a CMD, or a command prompt environment channel, we can just type CMD and press enter. And now it says that a new channel has been created. Use CH minus question mark to see the channel help. It reminds me a little bit of old school television before you had cable, where you would use the knob to switch. In Syracuse, New York, where I was born and raised, we had 3, 5, and 9, and 24 was the public access channel. Similarly, in the serial console, it functions on the basis of discrete channels. We can use just CH to list all channels, and then as you see here, CHSI is what we use to switch to a channel. So what we'll do is do a CH to see our available channels. We verify that the new CMD channel is on one. So we'll do CH space minus SI space one and hit enter. 
It says, use any key to view the channel. I'll press enter, and we're now asked to authenticate. I'm going to use my default administrator account associated with this virtual machine. I'll use my username. I'm not in an Active Directory domain. I'm in a work group, so I'll press enter instead of keying that in, and then I'll carefully type my password. Submit that, and if authentication completes successfully, which you see it has, we're now in a cmd.exe environment on that virtual machine. Now here you can use some of your old-fashioned Windows troubleshooting tools like BCD Edit and so forth. But you have to remember, of course, that Microsoft does block off some level of access to the underlying virtual machine because this is the cloud after all, and we can't get too close to the bare metal. But what I normally do is I'll invoke a PowerShell session. This would be either PowerShell in the case of an older Windows VM, like this is Windows Server 2016 that has PowerShell desktop. Actually, I don't know what version. Let's do a PS version table and see what version it is. 5.1 desktop, that's fine. If this was Linux, then we would do PWSH to start PowerShell Core version 6. But anyway, now that we're at a PS prompt, we can configure services, we can do Windows features, all of that kind of stuff that we normally would do, we can access now from within the serial console environment. As far as our configuration options up here, we can adjust the text size and the font. FN allows us to send function key bindings into the serial console. The power button will restart the VM. And then the final button here is where we can send what's called a non-maskable interrupt or NMI command into the VM. That gets deeper than I want to get here. Just check the Azure documentation for Serial Console NMI or Serial Console FN keys and you can read more about that. To exit the session here, we can simply close the blade and then we're back in business. Cool. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this little lesson on the Serial Console with Azure Virtual Machines. Thanks so much for watching my YouTube channel. I appreciate you. Take good care.